Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with Augie Johnston. Augie, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, man. I'm excited because this is something I actually need to start learning a little bit more about uh, video editing, right? Kind of getting it. Before we get into all that, in fact, the business is called Vid Chops. But before we get on that, Augie, tell us a little about you. Where are you calling in from? Give us a little background. Yeah, well, I'm calling in from California, San Luis Obispo, California. It's a hometown where I was born and raised. And a little bit about me, kind of a quick background, is uh, I moved to Europe in 2009 to play semi-professionally basketball. So I was over there. I was getting paid peanuts. I'm talking about this is semi-professional, <laughs> okay? But I wanted to keep playing, right? Hey, I wanted to keep still, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was after college. Uh, I played at a small college and stuff, and... So I wanted to find a way to make more money online. So I did that Google search that so many people do, how to make money online. I figured if I was living over there, I could supplement my income uh, and continue to play basketball. So uh, that Google search kind of took me down the rabbit hole of entrepreneurship. Uh, eventually, it led me to create my own YouTube channel and launch a business through YouTube. So I grew a basketball training YouTube channel uh, to about four or 200,000 subscribers, over 20 million views. And throughout that whole time, I was uh, creating products, building an email list. I built an email list of over 50,000 people, uh, and I launched over 11 products uh, to that audience. And throughout that whole thing, I felt the pain point of how hard it is to create content online. And uh, we can talk more about that later. Uh, but one of the biggest pain points for me was, was the video editing. You know, I was releasing one video a week on YouTube, which wasn't that much, sometimes two, but... I was also releasing a lot of like uh, info products, like online courses, how to shoot a basketball, how, you know, 12 week workout program. And a lot of times those had like 50 videos in them just for one course. And so the video editing pain point was something that uh, eventually when I finished playing and moved back home, I decided to kind of tackle. And uh, I had read a book called The Seven Day Startup by Dan Norris. I highly recommend it. And so I put together a website and I put together a business plan, kind of a, a semi business plan. And I launched VidShops, which is a video editing service for YouTubers. So at this point, we're just looking for ways to help solve all the biggest issues that video creators and entrepreneurs face when trying to create online content for YouTube or, or other social media platforms. Uh, and that's the journey I'm on now. We've been running it for about five, almost six years. And uh, yeah, that's VidShops. And that's where I'm at now. So it sounds like, because because one, it kind of sounds like you're primarily expired or inspired by some of your own personal pain points. And, and what you found was a business opportunity. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's a good tip for anybody. I mean, whether whatever kind of business you have, you know, you're, you're facing pain points, right? So if maybe the next step in your entrepreneurial journey would be to solve a pain point from your past business, you have a business right there. So that's exactly what happened. I love it. Now let's, let's go back to the beginning of the entrepreneurial journey. Take us through the process of, you know, de essentially developing and creating, you know, this video editing uh, entrepreneurship business. How did you go from creating your own to creating a business? Yeah. So for VidShops, uh, it's considered a productized service. So if you've never heard that term, it's a pretty popular buzzword now, but back then it wasn't. Um, so basically, it's a great business model, I think, for anybody, because you can take pretty much any service and you can just productize it, meaning it's a monthly subscription, right? So you sign up for a monthly subscription with us. Uh, so for example, let's say you're an accountant, and you work remote, you could take that skill set that you have, you could productize it and launch a business and be the accountant, I was the video editor. Right. So all I needed was a landing page, a way for people to collect or a way for us to collect payments. And I was off to the races, you know, I, I shared it around in a few Reddit forums and a few places online, got my first one or two clients I edited. Once we grew, I think we got to 10 clients I was editing for. Um, I was in the position to hire. And that's kind of how you can start and run a productized service. And uh, the good thing about it is it's, just, it's so much value because it's not just digital dust. 
You're not buying a course. You're not buying something that's just here today, gone tomorrow. You're buying a real service where there's real people behind the scenes taking a look at your business and helping you putting in the hours to do it. So um, I think you can create a lot of value through productized services. You know, one of the things you just mentioned right there was you're creating this network. And and one of the focuses you meant, or one of the, the platforms you mentioned was Reddit. Take us through that process, because I think that is kind of an underserved and underutilized thing is first creating uh, your brand through networking on these social sites. So how did you do it? Yeah, it wasn't any kind of master plan to it or anything. But, you know, one of the things that I learned through my YouTube business is that you need traffic, right? You need eyeballs on your product. And I think a lot of people face that they have this big idea and I did in my early years too. I mean, the first course I launched was before I started a YouTube channel. I, you know, outsourced pretty much the whole thing except for the course part, creating it. And I got the web page up and I'm like, all right, here we go. We're going to rank on Google. We're going to get all these kind of eyeballs, but it, no, no sales happened, you know? And that's what led me to say, well, how do I get traffic to my website? And that's when I started the YouTube channel, built my audience, redirected them to my offers to create sales. And so when I came time to launch VidChops, I, like I said, created the business, got everything in line, and I knew I needed traffic. And so Reddit was the first place that I went to, and I found some, you know, video creator forums, places where people were already talking about YouTube. And I just started adding value and just started helping people out. And then eventually I posted, hey, guys, guess what? I just launched this new thing. Uh, and and a couple, I, mean, I think I got maybe one client off that. But it was just enough because I brought that client in. I over-delivered as much as I could. He referred me to another person who signed up who over-delivered again. And luckily, that person was somebody who had influence online. And they also recommended me to their audience. And that's basically how we got started. You know, folks, I hope you're listening. There's there's two really big things right there. Is one, when you're when you're building this network of relations throughout you know various communities it's important to provide value don't go in there and just kind of you know off the cuff um you know so to speak come out of your ass right you don't want to speak out of your ass you truly want to come with some value you want to bring people some type and this goes with almost every profession i talk about it constantly in the healthcare world too you know you have to look at ways of providing value to these community providers and these community hospitals clinics and so on and so forth including our patients right how do we provide value and then and then on top of that um you were, you were kind of mentioning one how do you create the value but then also just once once you're done come back, like always kind of return back to your network. Cause I think you mentioned you only got one cell, but that one cell is all you really kind of need because that also is going to create that confidence in, in kind of going forward. I think everybody remembers that first cell right now. Let's go back though. I want to even go even further back. What, what got you into visit editing? Now you're, you're playing professional ball over in Europe and then you went video editing. How did, how did that transition occur? Yeah, it was it was really all about trying to extend my playing career and make some money and kind of set myself up for when I was done playing. You know, I I fell into the whole laptop lifestyle movement, right? I wanted to own my time. I wanted to be location independent. And all those kind of things were new to me at the time back in 2009, 2010 and, and really intrigued me. And so I thought, well, hey, I don't know how long I'm going to play for, but I have all this time. I have one or two practices a day. I'm not working a nine to five. I have a an apartment that the team provides me. Like, let me learn and let me try to, you know, implement and see what I can do. So, um, you know, with when it started on YouTube, I didn't know anything about video editing, right? That was kind of my practice ground where I got good at it and and learned. And, and so when it came time to, uh, to kind of figure out what's next. I had other ideas too, you know, maybe a productized service for graphic design, maybe a productized service for, I don't know, writing, you know, copywriting. Uh, but what I, when I looked around and I said, okay, well, what's the future? You know, I saw online video really blowing up. Right. And, and this, especially back then, right. This is, you know, YouTube, I think started like 2005, got purchased by Google 2006. And then here I am in 2009, starting in and seeing like, wow, this YouTube thing is really growing. I want to be in a market, right? That's, that's hungry, a uh, starving market. So that's what kind of led me to make the decision to go with VidChops. Also at the time, 
there wasn't any other productized services for video editing. We were we had first mover advantage in that space. Um, so all those things kind of made a lot of sense to me to to try and get started with a video editing service. Um, but you know, what led me to video editing was creating content online. And I think that's a good way for everybody to start. You know, it's, you pick up a new skill, you learn how to record the video, you learn how to edit the video, you learn how to publish it, and now you have a new skill set. So that's what happened to me. You know, and I love that piece, you know, uh, trying something new because you are just going to learn a new skill set. Everybody, you know, internet was only came out with like 1994, 1992 or something like that, which is kind of crazy. I know it, I know that's a long time ago, but folks, it really wasn't that long ago. It really, really was just seem. And I was, you know, I was talking to Augie before we jumped on this call. Um, you know, I'm looking at creating a video channel, YouTube video channel as well, because I was mentioning Augie video is king or queen or however one you pronounce it. It is kind of the creme de la creme right now. It's where most individuals are starting to look to to gain um, some some education or some traction, right? Some marketing. There's a lot of YouTube University, right? It's called YouTube University for a reason. And so hopefully, you know, soon uh, here in the future, so folks listening, you're going to have to hold them to this. So here soon, you'll hopefully see us on YouTube and you'll be able to see us alive as well. So now you've you've kind of gone through this process. You're, you're building up this brand, uh, but starting a business can have its rewarding moments, right? What are some aspects that you found relatively enjoyable during the early stages of your entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, uh, things that I would fi found enjoyable were like landing big clients, you know, like sometimes, uh -huh. you know, I was in this YouTube space, right, for like four years with my own basketball training channel. And I was, you know, doing the Google search, you know, how to grow on YouTube, how to get more views, you know, trying to find the best practices for YouTube. And there's people out there delivering that information, right? And I really looked up to those guys. And I was like, man, these guys are some YouTube geniuses. They're providing me so much value. And eventually, a lot of those guys became our affiliates, our partners, or even our clients. And even some of the biggest names in the YouTube help or YouTube expert niche are currently our clients or were our clients in the past and we have testimonials and everything from them. So that was like the best, like being able to serve those guys and work with those guys, although pretty stressful, uh, just kind of made me feel like, like I was kind of a part of their team, you know, like even though they're the ones getting, you know, speaking gigs and going and, and being the MCs at these major conferences and stuff, I was kind of the man behind the scenes, helping them out, uh, to achieve those goals that they were achieving. So that was super enjoyable for me. Um, also too, like once I started building a team of editors and admin and all that kind of stuff, I really enjoyed uh, like just managing them and being a part of them and being able to say, Hey, it's okay. You know, when you make a mistake and just work on my leadership skills and stuff in, in, in that regard, because uh, I come from the basketball world. I, I currently am a basketball coach. I coach varsity high school basketball and, and so it's, it's fun for me to kind of see myself on a team that's not in the basketball world. I don't know if that makes sense, but, yeah, no. um, that, that, that's pretty enjoyable for me. Yeah. That's, that's a very interesting concept. Cause I think, you know, I, I played sports, play basketball, football, baseball, kind of go roaming up. And, you know, I think one of the things that sports teaches you is just a very unique camaraderie and like that team aspect approach, right? but it also creates this competitiveness, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's something that entrepreneurs, all entrepreneurs have. Now, what was that first client that you're like, this is it, I've, I'm, we're, we're gonna do it? Yeah, so uh, his name is Andrew Edwards. He's actually still our client five years later. It's kind of my claim to fame there. Uh, he's a great video creator. He has a tech channel and and we've watched him grow over the years. Um, and and yeah, so he he signed up he bared with us through a lot of tough times where we just didn't have our act together fully. Um, I remember even one of the first few videos that I edited for him. Uh, he, you know, we, there were some, just some issues cause he has a tech channel, right? He knows what he's, he's he knows yeah. video editing. He knows tech. He knows how to see automatically sync audio. And at that point I didn't. And I remember sending him a project back and the audio wasn't automatically synced. It was manually synced. And he actually educated me on how to, uh, automatically sync the audio and, and, um, yeah, so he, he, you know, guys like that are kind of like our dream clients because not only do they create great content and stuff, but they have a business 
that's sustainable to hire a video editor for five years straight, you know? And, and so, um, yeah, it's been great working with him and, and, and just kind of watching him grow and, and speak and just, just kind of be a, an industry leader. Yeah. I think that's another important piece too, is, you know, folks out there, if you have a special skill that you can, you know, provide some, uh, mentorship to others, please do, because that also allows you to strengthen their skill in that skill set, right? Everybody knows if, if you're doing something, if you're teaching by doing, you're going to kind of get it, understand it a little bit better, right? You're going to be able to do it a little quicker, you become more efficient. Uh, but then you're also helping somebody else out. This isn't always a competition, right? And I think that's pretty cool what you have in a client being able to say, hey, this is how you do things. And I appreciate, you know, it's a lot of the folks that have come on this show to have taken time to really say, Hey, this is how you do this. This is how you sync this. This is how you, you know, make sure the music kind of dials down. So again, I think it's it's pretty awesome because uh, it's it's fun learning, right? But mm -hmm. I I don't know what I don't know. There's a lot that, that my wife tells me there's a lot that I don't know still. <laughs> so now uh, entrepreneurship challenges. Let's talk about some of the challenges. Can you share some of those uh, significant hurdles that you encountered uh, when you started your own worker business? Yeah. So. Uh... You know, the losing clients and gaining clients, like it, it happens, you know? And so I think the biggest challenges for us were actually losing, losing big name clients. Um, so, you know, like I said, we had one of the um, industry's top uh, authorities in the YouTube help space who was with us for years. And then he left, you know, he went to a competitor um, and then eventually came back, you know? So I think... That was definitely a challenge, a big hit where I looked at my team and I was frustrated. I said, hey, how do we drop the ball on this one? Um, you know, this is this is could destroy our business, all that kind of stuff. Um, so those are definitely some stressful moments. I think anytime you have clients and you're not running a business, that's just kind of, you know, I guess e-commerce where they're just buying a product from you, it's shipping to their house, stuff like that. There's more stress. Okay? There's a lot more stress because you got people. Uh, who have expectations and you have to meet those expectations. And so that can, that can create stress. So for me, that was definitely some of the challenging times is, is losing big clients um, and trying to figure out what we did wrong, uh, fixing that. Um, also challenges are, you know, good challenges are when you get like a rush of new clients, right? Like we have one partner who every now and then will promote us out to their huge audience and when that happens, we get a rush of clients and we have to kind of sometimes figure it out. And whether we need, you know, an admin on our team to step up and go and start editing videos, we have kind of now at this point, you know, a lot of things in place to protect us from those issues. But uh, a rush of clients is, is a good problem to have, but definitely a challenge. You know, one of the things you, you kind of mentioned, like challenges and overcoming some of these things. Um, have you ever had that moment of self-doubt? And if so, how did you overcome it? Yeah, definitely had moments of self-doubt. But to be honest, this this thing has been rolling pretty well. I guess the biggest moments of self-doubt is when I see a competitor come into the space and offer something better than what we offer, right? They, you know, we have our price points, we have what we offer in our scope. And of course, you can always do more, right? So a competitor can come into our space, offer more than we offer. Maybe they offer... Uh, you know, social media posting, like they'll post to your social media, or maybe they offer, I don't know, just things that are outside of our scope, right? Maybe writing service on top of it, or graphic design on top of video editing. Uh, those are definitely challenging times and things that kind of make me second guess what we're doing, like maybe we need to do more. Um, and, and so those are definitely, you know, the competitor, the, the space is highly competitive now. When I first started, it wasn't, like I said, we had first mover advantage. So that's one of the things that we're constantly trying to deal with is, is new people coming in and how do we kind of differentiate ourselves and make sure that we're offering a better video editing service than they are. You know, that's a, that's a great point. Let's, let's, could you walk us through the strategies and efforts that you employed to build and establish your brand identity? How do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, I think with us, uh, it's in the video editing sp space and a lot of services too, it's all quality. You know, it's, it's, do we hit our deadlines? Yes. Do we offer quality in every single edit? Yes. Do we offer repurposing, right? So that's when you take a long form video and you make it vertical for TikTok or Instagram reels or Facebook reels. Um, so these are like little pieces that we've added. 
Uh, most recently, it's something that we've added is community. So we've launched a community where people can log in, ask questions, uh, as well as group coaching calls where people can hop on a call with myself once a week. We can help you come up with video topics, titles, scripts, stuff like that uh, on that coaching call. So I think that all those things have kind of helped us build our brand. Um, and then as far as is actual branding goes, you know, it's, it's about releasing content, you know, nowadays. So we started releasing content, podcasts, um, stuff like that uh, to just help build up the brand and, and make sure that we're offering more value than just the video editing service. Uh, so those things are all kind of brand new um, and really excited about the community. I think it's going to help a lot because, you know, one of the reasons people do cancel is they're just not recording videos, right? They're just not finding the time to go and hit record and, and deliver their message and, and create that video. And so that's a challenge for us because that's really out of our control. We can do things to help, but a lot of times that's on the client. And if they're not using our service, then they're going to cancel. Yeah. And so, and you know, one of the things you mentioned, you've been doing this since 2009, you, you continue to grow and continue to learn what, what's the, what's the next five, 10 years look like for VidChops? Yeah. For VidChops specifically, I want to continue to help video creators and entrepreneurs that are creating video content. It, it goes much deeper than video editing, right? I just mentioned scripting. I just mentioned repurposing videos, all that kind of stuff. I think it can even go deeper than than video, right? Like how do we help these video creators make more money off their channels? How do we help them monetize and build an email list and launch products? Um, so really just heavily focused on helping people create online businesses through video. You know, I think another opportunity could be, you know, ads. How do we become an ad editing service or maybe even an ad production service where you say, hey, this is our product and we can create an ad for you, we can launch your ads. Um, so that's kind of the future. I think the future of VidChops, uh, we have built a proprietary uh, app that we use as a kind of a client portal where our clients can log in. Uh, it has project management aspect to it. It has uh, video review tools inside of it, graphic review tools. And we've built all that from scratch. So I think there is also maybe a software play in the future, uh, maybe some sort of SaaS product. Um, we talk about it sometimes internally, but um, it's just a huge endeavor that maybe, you know, that maybe in five years, that's something we take a look at. You know, that's a great example. Uh, first and foremost, I think your entire business model video, vid chops, the way it started, right? You're basically addressing an issue that you see pretty consistently that you felt other people's had. And then so you basically create a solution. And now you're working through your solution and you realize there's another issue. And that is this communication back to your clients, talking about the project, project management, video review, making sure all these things are set. And you're realizing, hey, other people might also have this same issue, right? And, and so folks, I hope you're really understanding, like when you're going through these processes, in fact, one of my uh, former, I think I believe it was Opal, uh, a former guest, same thing, right? Where they were an uh, agency and switched to a SaaS company, right? And so these pivots are so unique because I think it's the experience of getting out there and doing the work and, and grinding through it is allows you the opportunity to uncover that these needs are, they don't have a solution to them, right? That's how most of these problems kind of become uncovered. Now, what, what, what do you, would you say you wish you knew before, like to this day, what is something you wish you knew when you started all of this? Something you knew, know today that you wish when you started your entrepreneurial endeavor that you knew? Uh, I would say probably uh, the whole client acquisition stuff. When I, when I first started VidShops, uh, my only experience was with organic traffic, right? I had a YouTube channel that would get views. I would ask people, hey, click the link in the description to get your free workout that you can download. They would click the link. They would go to a squeeze page. They would enter their email. We'd send them the, the workout that they could do. We would build a lead. And that's basically how we operated. There was an email follow-up sequence that would pitch products, deliver more content, build the relationship, right? Pretty typical digital marketing strategy there. Nowadays, the way we operate is much more complicated and in-depth, right? We now have a sales team. We have, you know, setters. We have closers. Um, we're booking calls. We're running ads. 
Um, so I wish I would have just known a little bit more about that uh, up front because I probably would have launched the company a little bit differently, grew a little bit faster. Um, but in the past couple of years, this, all these kind of more, I guess, in-depth, high-tech sales processes are pretty good. You know, they work pretty well. I mean, imagine, so now we run ads, right? Somebody clicks on our ad, they go to a website, they enter their name, their phone number, we build a lead. Well, our appointment setter will then call that lead, you know, and say, hey, thank you for filling out the form. Uh, is there anything I can, any questions I can answer for you real quick? Uh, if you'd like more information, if you want to know more about us, you know, and they'll qualify and be like, you know, do you create content? Yes. Do you have a business? Yes. Then they'll say, hey, well, you should book a call. And they'll, they'll book a call on a closer's calendar who then will get on the call with them and try to close them or really just try to figure out if we can help them. And if we can, then, you know, offer them the best plan that we have for them. And that sales process there is, is one that any company that's selling anything that's semi high ticket, you know, we're not talking about a $47 product, but something that's, you know, you got a lifetime value of maybe $2,000 on, on a sign up. That's a great sales process that you should implement. And so um, that's one thing that I have just recently kind of been diving into. You know, folks, I want you to take note of this uh, example right here, because this is a great example. And in fact, I'm pretty sure, Augie, this is exactly what you're talking about, is a sales funnel, right? Yeah. How do you, And but there's also the marketing funnel. So there's two different funnels and the sales funnel and the marketing funnel, they have to coexist and they have to work together, right? So at each one of these sections of your funnel, as your funnel gets smaller and smaller, because you're trying to get from a lead to a sale, so right, awareness of your product down to a conversion, a sell of the product, right? And so what Augie is essentially doing at each one of these stages, he's also, I think one of, one of the point and thing you mentioned was the, the speakers, the callers, the first callers are screening, right? They're asking specific questions because that algorithm is gonna help them determine, okay, this individual can move forward to the closer position, or it doesn't make sense. We don't want to waste time, folks. We, we this, we're not in the business of wasting time, and we're not in the business of giving out a free lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're really trying to focus who makes sense to kind of bring who do who is who does it make sense to really spend our time and energy on to get down to the conversion, right? And then once you get down to the conversion, now it's all about retaining. Now, now you want to change that for conversion into a loyal right? Customer, right? And that's all about good customer service, quality, right? Efficiency. Uh, as, as Augie mentioned, building a proprietary app that really allows them to stay on track for their product development. Because I guarantee you that is a probably a huge customer satisfactor, like having something like that, that's catered specifically to me that is a uh, project management. So I know I can see the workflow that's going on. Uh, I, I'm as close of as, as I want to be or as far away as I want to be. Right. That information is totally. there on the app if you want it, but if you don't want to open an app, you don't need it. Right. And I think that that is really important. And so, folks, when you're thinking about creating a product or service and you're thinking about retaining all these customers, think about how you want to structure your sales funnel and how does your marketing funnel relate to it? Because they have to be related. Right. You have to be using specific marketing tactics at specific times during that sales funnel to create from awareness to actual conversion down to a loyal, loyal client. Right. And so I, I, I just wanted to take a moment to point that out because it's such a great example of the, the use of a sales funnel, right. In a practical, practical way. Yeah. And if you don't have any kind of sales funnels, if you just have a web page and that's it, then you're losing out on a lot of, a lot of money because uh, it's just, like you said, people are going to come, they're going to look and they're going to leave and never come back. So you want to make sure to always build that lead. When did you start to learn about this? Because you mentioned, man, if I had learned about this sooner, I'd have been so much. I would have made so much more. I'd been so much further uh, further along. When did you start to learn about this concept? Yeah, I mean, I, I've known about it for a long time, but we started uh, booking calls probably about two years ago, I would say. Uh, and then since then, we've just kind of tweaked it and gotten a little bit more advanced and a little bit better. Um, as far as adding a setter and and doing qualifications and stuff like that. Nice. Now, what you've you've been doing this, you know, since two thousand nine. You've been doing this, have various iterations, and you're kind of starting to look into. You mentioned uh, the 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 app area. What advice would you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Uh, the the first piece of advice is get started. 
right? Like just get your first customer. Like you, you have an idea, you're listening to this, you never launched a business, you have an idea. Like put up the web page, add the PayPal buy now, buy now button or whatever. And and now you have something you can share around, you know, like the first step is just to hit up your your warm audience, you know, the people that know you and that you know, and see if you can get a customer. Because a lot of times, if you can get one customer and like the example I, I talked about earlier, right, and you can over deliver to that customer, then that there's no marketing that needs to be done. They will market it for you, right? They will get the word out for you. They will recommend you. Um, especially if you help them have success, because people are going to ask them, you know, how did you do that? You know, how did you grow your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers in just one year? Oh, well, I started releasing double the content. Well, how, how are you able to do that? Well, I hired a video editor, right? So I would say the, the biggest advice is, is just get started. Um, and then the second piece of advice that I have for, for people that already have uh, a business running right now is to focus on getting more traffic. Traffic is such a challenge. I think people don't talk about it enough. Everyone talks about, you know, landing page optimization and, and creating your offer and all these things. But I think being able to get traffic is really the best skill because then you don't even need a product, right? Then you can just send traffic to affiliate offers, to other, other people's offers, make a commission on it. But it seems like that is the hardest piece for most people is to figure out how to get traffic and you do it through through content, you know, organically or through paid ads. And I think those are um, just really high value skill sets, you know, as you're trying to build up your skill set, you can learn how to be, you know, a video editor. That's one skill set. But if you can learn how to really run paid ads for a company and make them some big money, then that's a really valuable skill set. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that goes back to what you were saying earlier is just creating value. Yeah. Right? How, how do you create value? I mean, that's at, at the end of the day, uh, not so I, I guess I should say say that again, because Sanjeev is probably screaming right now at me at this podcast. We need to, uh, we, we're value entrepreneurs. We, we don't need to create value. People already know what's valuable to them. Essentially, what we need to do is is bring that value to them. Things that they find already, because again, folks already know what they find valuable, right? So we're not really creating value. We're just uh, essentially leveraging what they find valuable and creating a product or service around it, right? And so oh, that was like, that was one thing that Sunjeev taught me. So I, that's one thing I always kind of catch myself. It's like we're not creating value. We're just ex, we're just finding the value and creating a product or service around it. <laughs> so that's my that's my new thing. But so now, Augie, for the listeners at home, they're interested more about bid shops. They wanna they wanna connect with you. Maybe they do in fact need a client. They wanna uh, hire you as their vendor or their their um their video editor. How do they do it? Yeah, if you want to uh, connect with me personally, then uh, I'm mo probably most active on Instagram uh, at Augie Johnston. Uh, so that's a great place to connect with me. And if you want to check out our video editing service, that's vidchops.com, vidchops.com. Perfect. And you know what, folks, uh, this is a great opportunity to remind you all this information will be on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter, so you can actually subscribe to that at theshadesofe.com. We're going to have all this information, and then we'll also have an individual web page of this episode on theshadesofe.com with a transcription. We'll have Augie's uh, link to the website as well as Augie's photo. So please, if you're if you're interested in connecting with Augie, please go and visit theshadesofe.com or subscribe to the newsletter or do both because we do have a buy now button. So please feel free to buy some of those products on there because they do help support the show. Now, Augie, is there anything else you would like to tell the uh, the the, uh, the listeners before we leave? Uh, no, I would just say that, uh, you know, one piece of advice that I tell all my basketball players, and I guess I can share this with uh, entrepreneurs because it applies to is, is play to your strengths and hide your weaknesses. So everyone has their strengths, whatever skill set you have, like, Go, go towards that direction, go towards your strengths and then hide your weaknesses. And that seems to work out for most people. Give me, give me an example. Give me an example of how you do that. Sure. So let's say you are great at uh, talking on camera, start a YouTube channel. Let's say you're a great writer, tweet more. Let's write a blog post. Let's say you're good at just uh, talking, start a podcast. I think, um, that's that's one way you can play to your strength in the content game. And then there's plenty of other examples, I think, in the entrepreneurship world. Yeah, that's that's a great point. And then folks, I gotta tell you, uh from my own personal experience, the first iteration is probably not gonna be great. 
I'll just be honest. Like my first podcast, you go back and listen to the first one compared to now. I think hopefully I've gotten better. The the speech is getting better. The the quality is getting better. Um, the guests have always been phenomenal, right? I think just me personally, the quality and the, what we're providing is, is getting slowly better. And to that point, I'm starting to get to that point. Like, hey, I got to outsource some things because I, I'm realizing after two years, there's things I'm good at and there's things I'm not good at. But I'm really glad I've taken the time to learn all of these new skills, right? The video editing, the SEO, the blog posts, the newsletters, right? All of these different things has helped me tremendously, not only personally, but professionally as well. So again, folks, take opportunity to learn new skills, uh, get out there. And as Augie has been kind of uh, talking about throughout this, uh, this episode, get out there and actually network. There's people out there that truly want to actually help and they're willing to lend their expertise to you. Um, it, so long as you also are providing some value back, right? Uh, we can't go over there uh, empty handed. So make, make sure you're providing value back to your community because again, we are a world of entrepreneurs. So I'm excited uh, Augie for what's coming down the pipeline. Uh, I'm really, I'm, and maybe we'll come back in a couple of five years and, and have you back on the show. And hopefully we'll be talking about a new product uh, that you'd be coming out with. So is, again, last thing, is there anything else you'd like to say before we head out? Nope. I think that's about it. Thank you so much for having me on and for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Perfect. And so folks listening, please follow me at the shadesv.com. You can also follow us on the social sites, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn at the shades of E. Thank you and have a great night.